So to give a little overview of, of the, the general structure of MEAs, of, of a compliance mechanism. And this is not always the same for each MEA, but, but some of the features you will usually find. You will usually find that the, the compliance mechanism or the, the provision or the decision establishing the mechanism will provide some information of why it's there, what is its purpose. Usually facilitating implementation, sometimes promote compliance. But you'll get an idea of why the mechanism was established in the first place. Then you'll usually find some information about what its nature is. And, and then you'll get, you'll get the ideas that, that the mechanism might be facilitative, it might be non-punitive, it might be non-adversarial. So these are some, some of the, the principles that, that guide the operation of such a mechanism. Then usually you'll get some information about, in the end, who makes any determination of compliance or non-compliance. So is there a committee that makes such a decision? And how is that commi committee, the, the composition of that committee established? So how many members does it have? Where do these members come from? What kind of powers, the powers do these members have? So who in the end gets to decide and what they, do they get to decide about? Then another very important question uh, for any compliance procedure or non-compliance procedure or non compliance mechanism is how does the process even start? And this is the, the usual question of, of triggers of compliance mechanisms. So it might be that a party finds itself in non-compliance and thinks, well, actually, I tried my best, couldn't do enough. I'm going to refer myself to a committee or a mechanism and basically say, well, can you help out? Can you, can you do something for, for me to, to make sure that in the future I will comply with my obligations? But it could also be slightly more finger pointy with some parties referring other parties, which you will also see in some MEAs. Most of the time though, what you see is that, that it's states refer, referring either themselves or referring others. But there are some exceptions. Um, sometimes it might be that secretariats or other bureaucracies might get involved. And in the Aarhus Convention on uh, Public Participation, you even have the possibility that NGOs might refer a state to the committee. So there's a number of ways you, in which you which can design the trigger mechanism. Procedure, again, there's a lot of different ways in which the, 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 the mechanism can, can, can be governed. Uh, I won't go into detail now about that. And then finally, going back to, to the enforcement and the managerial school, what kind of measures do you take at the very end? Are you going to take facilitative measures such as capacity building or financial or technical assistance? Or are you talking more about enforcement, like some kind of penalty or some kind of sanction at the end of the line? So these are just some general design considerations for, for compliance mechanisms to take into account.